and we back and today we're gonna be rebuilding new orleans pelicans man everybody know that the lakers are interested i mean lebron been out here somewhat recruiting going to dinner with anthony davis and then we got teams like the boston celtics who would like to make a trade for him next offseason i'm like let's slow our roll and try to help anthony davis win in new orleans last night the dude had to put uh, practically 50 points to win against the Dallas Mavericks. So I'm, he needs a little bit more help, man. I like what they got going on here. We obviously have Anthony Davis, who's always a stellar defender. We have Drew Holiday, that was first team all defense last year. We have Julius Randle, who's coming into himself at 24 years old. He's only on the one-year deal, which sucks, which means that we probably won't be able to bring him back. And then Nico Miritich is having the best year of his career, too, when he's healthy. And that's it. Like, the rest of this roster is kind of a nothing. Etwan Moore has been decent. Alfred Payton has been decent when he's been healthy, but he hasn't been healthy. They just don't have enough. Like, sometimes it just feels like it's Anthony Davis and Drew Holiday. Sometimes it feels like it's just Julius Randle and Anthony Davis. Well, our job is to get that necessary help. The big problem with them is, is that they have money tied up to guys like Solomon Hill making $12 million for two years. We have Wesley Johnson, who they just traded for, who barely even plays. It just seems like this team needs our help, so we're here for it. The first deal we're going to do this year is try to trade Solomon Hill. Now, I don't necessarily, I want to make the playoffs this year, right? I want to make the playoffs this year. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pack a Solomon Hill in a top 10 protected first round pick. And hopefully this can get us like a solid small forward to start because it's always been their thing. They never really had that small forward. Tyreek Evans, when he was there, was pretty injured. Kevin Love, I'm not making a trade for Kevin Love though. John Collins, no. My kid Gilchrist doesn't really fit. Huh. A guy like Tim Hardaway Jr. could work. He's pretty small, though. Actually, no, he's 6'6". He can run some small four for us. But if we make this trade, does that make us a finals contender? Probably not. So the trade find is not really getting us anything. So maybe we'll try to build a trade ourselves. I like the idea of Tim Hardaway Jr., but I don't know if exactly that's the deal we want to do. So give me some time. Let me try to build the real deal. I'm going to trade for TJ Warren. Now, the thing is, with having Anthony Davis, we don't need a superstar to pair alongside him. We just need players that can come in and fill their roles. And TJ Warren is having a career year, especially from shooting the three. Dude went from like a 20% three-point shooter, right? 22% to 44%. His 2K rating is already up to 86. So I like that deal a lot for us. Get us more shooting. And I think this is what the roster is going to look like. And I think this is good enough to make the playoffs. Our bench is still trash. So maybe we make a trade for our bench. But I like it that Etwan Moore is now a bench player because though he has been solid this season, his, he's more of just like a come off the bench and score that way. Same thing when you go Miritich. Maybe there's one more deal out there to get our bench a little bit better. Uh, but our starting five, I like, and I think it's good enough definitely to make the playoffs. I decided that we will make the trade for Kevin Love. Nico Mirch is on the last year of his deal, and we're not going to be able to bring back him and Julius Randle. I want to try to bring Julius Randle back, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to. So we're going to trade for Kevin Love, and we're going to have Julius Randle come off our bench. I like it better for him anyway to be our spark plug off that bench, our backup power forward slash center. So now we have Anthony Davis and Kevin Love together, and I, I like that a lot. Julius Randle off the bench is going to get a lot of play because we really don't have a backup center. And I definitely don't want Julia Okafor playing. So Julius Randle is going to get a lot of backup center minutes. And now we just need, like, another guard. And I think we're all set. Again, Etwan Moore is going to be solid for us. But if we can trade for another guard. I wish Ian Clark worked out for them, man. This year, he just hasn't been it. Last year, pretty solid. Seven points per game, shooting 45% from the field. But this year, he doesn't even really touch the floor. And when he does touch the floor, he ain't shooting well. I just really wish that would have worked out. But regardless, we need another guard. Hopefully, like a point guard. And uh, we'll be all set. We're going to pick up Sadoransky. That is a nice pickup, I think, because he's honestly big enough to run three positions. Like, I don't know if he can guard the best small forwards in the league, but he definitely can basically play three positions. And that's how we're going to do things. This is what our team is looking like right now. I like it. Again, our bench is not incredible, but it's going to work out, I think. Um, we still have, of course, Drew Holiday. I like the trades we made. So I'm going to simulate. We are definitely a playoff team. If we don't make the playoffs, and that is a huge, huge disappointment. But I, I feel pretty confident. MVP went to Giannis. DeAndre Aiden went to the year. Six, man. I don't care. About Anthony Davis, he fits the play of the year. That's what I care about. I want to see what our guys did. And for some reason, 2K never puts respect on Anthony Davis' name. He only averaged 21 points per game. 
I had him as our number one option, and he still only averaged 21. That's disrespectful, but I'll take it. I'll take it. As long as we made the playoffs, which we did, we ended up as a six seed, so maybe not as great as we would expect it, but I take it, you know? Um, we finished with the L, but all of our guys played solid. That's all I really care for. We made it, and you never know. Once the playoffs come around, and the day was kicking into gear, and at 21, tone to 30 in a game, you know? And off our bench, we had Julius Randle, who played really solid. He didn't win six men of the year. He probably should have. But whatever, though. Our boys is here to play. So let's make this rotation smaller because I need my starters to play as many minutes as possible. Anthony Davis is on fire. I still want Kevin Love starting. And let's get it, man. First round, we're going against the Houston Rockets. That's a that's a decent matchup, man. We got to stop James Harden and look at Drew Holiday. Held James Harden to 18 points, 8 for 20, 2 for 11 from 3. Got him. Game 2. Game 2, we win as well. James Harden, 12 points, 3 for 17. Drew Holiday, 16 points, but 4 steals. He's out here clamping up James Harden. Game 3, we lose. Oh, oh. <laughs> we didn't see... Hey, you can't clap up James Harden that many times, all right? That's just how good James Harden is. So he was going to get his game eventually. But we need to bounce back. 3-1. And boom, another clamp session. Let's go. Another clamp session. And then the last game, hopefully, we win. And now, okay, see. This is where it gets a little bit more iffy because guarding James Harden for Drew Holiday, they're, they're practically the same size, right, as far as height goes. I guess James Harden's a little bit taller, but I can't have, or can I have um, him guarding Paul George? Like, I feel like he struggled guarding Paul George because Paul George is so much bigger. TJ Warren defensively ain't really all that, you know. Paul George may destroy him, but I will simulate the first game. We'll simulate the first game. Perimeter defense, D+. Plus. Yikes. We'll simulate the first game, see how Paul George does. If he, do if he kills, then we'll put Drew Holiday on him, but... Until then, let's get it. Game one. We won. Both their stars kind of struggled. We clamped up defensively. That's what I like to see. And Drew Holiday said, hold on. Hold this 40. Hold this 40. Game two. We win that as well. This time, Paul, our defense is incredible. Holding Paul George and Russell Westbrook to under 20 points. Game three. Oh, my God. We're up 3-0. That's it. I don't even need to look at stats. We Are we sweeping them? No, we don't get the sweep. Paul George comes out to play this game. But we're going to beat him in five, hopefully. No. Oh, this time it was Steven Adams. We still had hold the, uh, these guys down. But our offense wasn't there that game. Game six. Okay, we move on. And another clamp session for the Pelicans. Were we the number one defense in the league? I'd be surprised, honestly. Defensive points. We weren't number uh we weren't number one, but we were top five, top six. Point differential, we were third in the league. So let's go. Western Conference Finals, baby. Golden State. Game one is a win. We clamped Steph Curry. <laughs> I need to give a little bit more love to um Etoine Moore. Because he's guarding the other point guards. He stopped. Russell Westbrook, first game, he stopped Steph Curry. Second game, he did not. Okay, we're going to look past that game three. Yeah, this is the Warriors, man. Honestly, this is the Warriors. I wouldn't be surprised if we lost this round. We're down 3-1. It was, it was good while it lasted. You know, we had a good run. Western Conference Finals, it is the Warriors. Who's going to stop that Warriors team in a seven-game series? They just swept the Toronto Raptors, so they were destined. I like what we did, though. I like what we did. We clamped up. As far as we can get, no big deal. And we, we get to the Western Conference Finals, which is the furthest they've been ever, right? Probably ever. So, I don't have a draft pick because I traded it in that TJ Warren thing. But it would have been a late 20s draft pick anyway. This is going to be interesting because Julius Randle is going to turn down his option, which means that he's not going to be here next season. He has such a good year for us. But regardless, he's probably not going to be back. Let's get to free agency. So, there it is. Julius Randle declines. It makes a lot of sense. He's got some big money coming his way after his performances this season and in the playoffs. We're going to keep Sadoransky. We'll let Andrew Harrison walk. Check Diallo can stay. And Trevon Buitt can uh, can go as well. He had a good, what was that, um, summer league for them. But I don't need him around. Is there any way in the world? Nope, I can't get him back. Yikes. Ah, 
Julius Randle, in 2K at least, Julius Randle's just a baller. He's just a ball. In real life, he is too, but in 2K especially, it looks like he's going to go to the Jazz or the Cavs. But let's see what we need. We need a point guard because each um, effort Payton is no longer there. We need some stuff, man. We need some stuff. So let me go out there and try to sign some people. I'll be back. We're going to trade Kevin Love for D'Angelo Russell. Honestly, every time I trade for Kevin Love in 2K, I'm disappointed. And this year was no exception. He only averaged 14 points per game, and he shot 40% from the field, 33 from three. I'm very disappointed in him. So because of that, I'm going to trade him. In real life, I like Kevin Love not a lot. But in 2K, for some reason, it just doesn't translate. D'Angelo Russell, I feel like he'd fit well alongside Drew Holiday. And, well, we didn't really have a point guard. I did sign rondo to come back but i don't want rondo starting on our team so him as a six man would be cool or maybe we'll even trade him but now i don't have a power four which is fine i feel like we can just make tj warren our power four if we have to and assign another small four i don't know exactly what we're gonna do besides like trade etuan more if i can for something he's making eight million dollars i don't want our first round pick this year because i still think we're gonna be in the playoffs so etuan more in the first round pick could they give us a nice power forward or something we're gonna trade for robert coverton i feel like he'd fit nicely with us because we don't need shot creators because we now have um d'angelo russell andrew holiday we just need people that'll knock down that shot and robert coverton has been one of the best better three-point shooters in the league and we look at his stats okay maybe his stats are really so so that but we know roco is a knockdown three and d guy and that's what we needed so i'll take him three point rating is an 83 and i think we're actually gonna make tj warren our power forward and that's the way we're going to be rolling. Point guard would be D'Angelo Russell, soon guard Drew Holiday, Robert Covington, TJ Warren, and Anthony Davis down low. I still need backup centers, power forwards, and shooting guards. But that's pretty much how the team is going to work out. And then the rest is roster fillers. Okay. So Anthony Davis, basically, that red bar means he's really not interested in resigning. <laughs> So, even though right here it says he will resign, and then right here it says, if the team is ready and willing, I'm open to working on a contract extension immediately. Extremely loyal, you, but 2K is saying that, nope, not really. So, that being said, we have to win this year, or he just won't resign. So, we have to go balls to the wall, and Drew Holiday, I'm, listen, I don't like to do it. I don't like to do it, but we're going to have to, man. We're going to have to. Zach Levine... Def I just love the defensive, th that defensive capabilities of Drew Holiday, and it sucks that we're gonna have to trade him right now. But we need a player that's oh, Julius Randle. We need a player that can help elevate us to that next level because, like I said, um, he's not gonna resign. I would love that D book, but we're gonna go Victor Oladipo because defensively they're matched up pretty well. I think Victor Oladipo was the second team all defense last year. Can we do? Does that show? And his career uh, awards. He was first team on defense too. So we're exchanging defense for defense. off And a little bit more offense Victor Lipo. Boom. So now we have another star alongside Anthony Davis. Does, is that enough? I don't really know, man. Is that enough? Maybe we, go, we trade TJ Warren. I really don't know. It sucks that we legitimately have to win this year or the challenge is over because Anthony Davis won't resign. So I got to do some stuff i wouldn't normally do which is uh just make a <laughs> make a lot of trades for year number two we could could bring a dematsa bonus but that's another deal with the pacers i'll be back i'll find the right deal that makes the most sense for us so we're gonna pick up john collins and kim bays more and uh that's that's it man i've been here for a long time trying to figure out the right deal and honestly not no none of these deals really make the most sense as far as us getting a lot better but that one does. The reason I mostly did it is because we got Kim Bazemore coming off our bench now. Our bench always has been trash. So that's what I wanted to do. I think that a team of Anthony Davis, Victor Oladipo, and D'Angelo Russell should be good enough to compete. Let's see if the Warriors re-sign their guys. The Warriors did not re-sign Clay. They still got their own big three, but they don't have Clay anymore, which means that they're they're definitely beatable. I still want to try to continue to build on our bench. All right, y'all. That's a t This is the toughest it's been as far as trying to make trades. I don't want to trade D'Angelo Russell, um, but he's making such big money. You know what? I'll try it. I'll try it. I've wanted to have D'Angelo Russell on the team because I don't think I ever have other than when I was rebuilding the Nets. But um, even his trade value is not crazy. 
Like, how many of these trades actually make us better? Not many of them. Not many of these trades make us better. So, I think that this is just the team we're going to have to roll with. And uh, hopefully, Anthony Davis and Victor Lodipo can really just shoulder that load and get us to the finals. Let's see. I mean, we were a couple games away a few or last season, so who knows? All right. So, the season is over, and Anthony Davis won the MVP. 28, 13, and 4. See, these are the type of numbers he should have been averaging last season, but they was disrespecting my guy. Wait. Last season, he did average 28. Oh, I swear to God, it said he averaged 24 last season or 21 last season. Y'all go recheck the footage. But regardless, Anthony Davis puts up career numbers. <laughs> if that ain't a sign, then this is about to be a championship year. I don't know what it is. RJ Bear wins rookie of the year. Zion wins six man of the year. Who's starting over Zion in New York? I don't know. Oh, Chris Stops. They both play power forward, I guess. Anthony Davis, defense player of the year. Karis Avert. Man, we won so many awards. Alvin Gentry, what's up, brother? Okay, we were the number one seed. I just feel it. Now that I know that we had the MVP, I just feel it. We nobody's even close to us when it came to the record. So let's let's keep it that way. Nobody's gonna be close to us when it comes to this championship. The Brooklyn Nets were the number two seed. I'm sorry, I had to see that. Uh, they got Kevin Love right. We made that trade with them for Kevin Love, and he went there and he averaged 17. So it's not like he was a he was a superstar. Uh, but they all around saw oh. 26 in the playoffs all around a solid team, but they were the two C which is weird to me Before we continue. I want to see the rest of the stats besides Anthony Davis's stats Victor Lipo 19 18 for D'Angelo Russell then our role players played their roles Did we shoot well from three as a team because that's that's really what I was looking for us to be a great three-point shooting team We didn't make the most actually we were middle of the pack, but what about percentage? Nope middle of the pack and percentage too. Oh, well, let's get it man. 3 on the clips. Get out of here. Next. Is it going to be Houston or is it going to be LeBron? Please be Houston. We beat Houston already. It was Houston and 7. LeBron them lose. All right. So, James Harden just put up 42 in the elimination game. So, that's tough. Game 1, we win. And we continue the streak of clamping up James Harden. This time, it's Victor Oladipo doing it for us. Game 2, they win. Not even a James Harden game, though. Not even a James Harden game. Game three. There we go. Come back with the dub. James Harden did have a big game, but we end up winning. If he has a big game and they lose, I don't care. I don't care. Three and one is the, the count. Brandon Knight is their second highest score. So that's how you know they not. Mm -mm. Ain't no coming back from that. Denver. I like it. Let's see what Denver got to offer. Game one. Oh, yeah. Jokic one for six. Anthony Davis clapping that boy up. We got defense around here. We got defense in New Orleans. Game two, we win. Game three, we lose. I just noticed that the Warriors lost in the first round of the playoffs to the Phoenix Suns. So, shout out to Josh Jackson, out of all people, for coming clutch at game seven. But regardless, we just lost last game. And it was, uh, yeah, this is what they do. Next game, let's go up 3-1. There it is. Another clamp session. Four for 15. 0 for 5 from three. Anthony Davis don't play. And we end the finals against the Celtics. It's so fitting. It's so fitting. They wanted to trade for AD. We said no. Game one, we win. Game two, we win. Anthony Davis saying this could have been yours. Game three, we win. And we sweep in the finals. Anthony Davis just averages 31, 10, and a 5. We're going to round up 31, 11, and 5. And two blocks. Wow. In the finals. That's pretty much the end of the video. I just want to see if he'd resign now, you know? I'm not rebuilding again. It's all over. But I'm just very curious if Anthony Davis is going to resign. We just won a championship, Anthony. You can't be trying to walk after a championship, right? He declined his player option. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, <laughs> qualifying, I don't care about that free agency. Anthony, you are you just won MVP. And we just, he declined. He declined. Anthony Davis declined. He has zero interest in even after winning MVP and finals MVP with us. That is crazy. That is crazy. I want to turn this, the automation on. Maybe it's because of me. So let me turn free agent automation on. Where is that? A team option, qualifying, free agency, all of that. And we just want to see where he ends up signing. We'll just we'll just see where he ends up signing. All right? Anthony, I, I, I don't feel good about this, though. He's still a free agent. 
He's the Grizzly side Ben Simmons. The Spurs side Mike Conley. This is a weird my league, huh? Okay. Last day of free agency, Anthony Davis still doesn't have a job. He doesn't want to sign with us. 2K is just a weird thing, man. Are we saying Anthony Davis is going to go into this season without an NBA job? The league MVP. Place for the Jazz. He signed to the Jazz. Wow, Utah, stand up. Y'all just took him from us. That is crazy. But we got our championship. That's all I care about. But now they have him and Rudy Gobert. And he went back to play with Julius Randle. It all makes sense. This is without a doubt a championship team, right? If we just make Anthony Davis a power forward for them. I'm not going any further. But that's just that's just crazy. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, comment AD if you got this far in it. So I know you're a real MVP. Thank you so much. Peace.